with that, um, I'll turn it over to our assistant uh, commissioner. Thanks, Mike. Um, afternoon, everyone. Appreciate the opportunity. Um, I've been asked to clarify the department's position on a couple amendments, et cetera. So I'll just quickly do that. Uh, the director already mentioned one. Um, um, Mr. Sanborn, we have no amendments at this time. I may clarify a few points. Uh, how, how's that? Uh, oh, okay. Just, just some, some, some positions of the department regarding this bill. Okay, but we we have no amendments on this. Yeah, this committee I, has no amendments on this bill at this time. Understood, Madam Chair. Just uh, I, let me just make a few broad, <laughs> uh, general points about uh, the position of the department. Um, the director already mentioned one. We intend the scope to include neighboring states and a review of that. Um, when the study is published. Uh, we were, were very open to public comments and reactions to those, and um, uh, and plus there will be opportunity in the rulemaking for any public comments. Um, and um, the uh, oh the, and we will ensure there's no conflict of interest, and there are provisions in the contract to make sure there won't be conflict of interest down the line. Um, on the issue of ch of a. Uh, uh, the potential of not having a 24 month time period and that being removed and it being open ended. The department does have concerns with that potential that could artificially prolong the rulemaking process in a way that we don't feel would be beneficial. Um, so we want to build a pass. We, this has been going on for multiple sessions and we're ready to move on with the rulemaking. Um, SB, 61 as currently amended the version in front of you the department can support and i have every confidence and expectation that it would make it through and be signed into law any changes to it puts that in danger so i just throw that out to you i, I we want to see something pass the version in front of you i know can happen uh, any changes to it i fear would derail that and we'd end up with another session with no direction forward. Senator Haskins. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I just want to clarify something. I was confused by Mr. Sanborn's comments that um, a certain amendment or alteration would put the bill in danger. And I want to understand that my role, I believe our role is to make law and then um, do the very best we can to be responsible to our constituents and then give it to you folks to do the rule making. So we will do our job without fear or favor. And I wanted to make sure that was understood. Sure. My comment was based on the fact um, I am very confident that this could go all the way through, including having the governor support the bill as written and as amended, the, the current version of the bill. Any alteration of that, and um, I am concerned that, and have been authorized to let folks know that it concerned that it could make it all the way through the this process. And with respect, sir, that's not my concern. No, no, it doesn't have to be. I'm just here to let folks know. I would, we have gone through this process over the last couple of months where we have been, given the fact of how close the bill came last session, the bill came and it ended up being vetoed by the governor and and not moving forward. We have been asked to be as clear as possible about what we believe is a bill DES can support and something that can have the support all the way so it can become law. And so we are being as transparent as possible every time we get up about what what has the possible, what we believe has the possibility of successfully being, making it through the whole process. And I am confident the current version of the bill would be able to do that. Amendments at this point would be a challenge to be able to see something successfully happen this session. As the director said, if this bill doesn't pass and nothing passes the session, we'll just incorporate this in the overall overall rule making process we are undertaking we after last session we
we brought we started to talk to the stakeholders about something how could we do how could we put a piece of legislation together that offered more transparency to the process we're aware there's some folks who are concerned about the yes and um you know the relationship we have with some of the folks we regulate and and that interaction so th this was actually an attempt to increase the transparency of the process to have a third party that would get public comments about the scope of what that would look at of bringing in other data and information to have a more thorough process than just the traditional rulemaking process so the reason we brought this forward was we wanted to increase the credibility of the process and we wanted to increase the transparency and we wanted to increase the amount of information that could be gathered and the opportunity folks to um, consume that information, comment on it, and 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 have their opinion be heard. So, um, the irony is, th th this legislation was was thought to actually um, uh, be a win and 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 give confidence to the folks who have concerns about um, landfills and how they're cited. So, uh, just a little more larger background on on why we're doing this way instead of not just going right to rulemaking. This adds layers and opportunity for interaction with the public. It adds layers and um, of information. And um, we would hope that that would mean it would be turn out for a better product for all of us, including the department. Question. So on page five, I don't understand why the whole line three there, if the department does not, that whole thing should be removed. Based upon what you just said in regards with transparency, we say on the page before, it has to be done in 24 months. We're saying something has to be done. It's great, we're all about this. It doesn't make sense that whole paragraph should be removed. We shouldn't have a what if, it just, it, it, I know there's other people that have commented on this. I just, it doesn't need to be there. I don't want to be obtuse, but I'm, I'm not sure there's a question. I'm happy to answer a question, but I... Yeah. Why does it, why are you saying that has to be there? You're saying it on the page before it has to be completed in 24 months. And also number seven has to happen first. The whole 150,000, that all has to happen first. Okay, so nothing's going to rules or jail car until the number seven's done. So I just don't understand why we're saying it's like, you know, it's to me, it's like setting it up to fail. I just feel as if we're saying it has to be done in 24 months on, you know, June 30th, 2023, we're gonna do the, you know, take in the, the RFPs for the 150,000. I don't understand why we can't remove that. Tell me why we can't remove that. I, I think it goes to this, this, I think it's the same answer that I gave Representative Germano. I, I think it's that, that there are parties who won't support that. and. Um, yeah, sure. But what parties? You know, the other gentleman said, you know, he talked about his stakeholders. Who who are these parties? Who are these stakeholders? I'd like to know. Yeah, I mean, our role as DES is to bring forward what we think, uh, answer questions about what we think would work best for um, our process. And and so we we contributed to the process from the perspective of DES. As I said, at the end of the last session, we were criticized for not being more transparent about what we thought could and couldn't be, be successfully make it all the way through the process. So I am all, and, and this isn't Mike, this is all I am, all I was here to do today was to let folks know that the version of this bill that's in front has the support needed to make it all the way through the process. If this is amended, it'll be up to it'll be up to the Senate whether they want to pass the other version, and it'll be up to the governor whatever version gets to his desk if he's going to sign it or not. I was simply saying. This is a version of the bill and a process that DS can support. We're publicly saying we can support that. 
and we're publicly saying we believe it would have the broad based support it would need it to be able to come to law. If you all feel that something else is needs to happen to the bill, well, the process will continue. We'll make our comments on the updated version of the bill and we'll see how the process plays itself out. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, Representative Pertenza um, kind of hit on my question, but uh, we know that our stakeholders are our constituents as, as legislators and they want clean water, okay? Uh, you have used the word stakeholder a number of times, uh, and in, you know, um, uh, for transparency reasons, it's, is it possible for you to talk about who your stakeholders are? Sure. Because from what I see, there's only one stakeholder that has any power at all, and that's the governor. So if there are stakeholders in well, this process, there must be other people that are applying pressure. Uh, so it'd be really nice to know who they are. Yeah, I mean, I was nominated by the governor, so I mean, he, he is my boss. So, uh, so that as a part of it, of course, he's one of my stakeholders and one of the department stakeholders he is the chief executive officer of the state government. Um, and uh, we work together on legislation. Of, uh, we get his advice on the policy uh, he'd like to see come out of legislation and he gets our advice on the technical impacts and, um, and our thoughts on the policy. So we work with the governor to make sure we're moving forward with policy that is going to work for the executive branch. Um, but our stakeholders include the state legislature, the executive council, the residents of the state, the businesses of the state, the, uh, the communities we regulate. Um, while we are the regulators, we find it that having a, an approach of cooperation and communication um, leads to better outcomes for all involved. Um, so we work for the entire state of New Hampshire, its residents, its businesses, and we work with all the elected officials of the state government, our sister agencies, and the other state employees. So everyone is our stakeholder. Um, and um, yes, the, 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 again, my only goal is, is you know, it's, it's, you know it's, it's a lose-lose situation. Last time, we weren't as clear about what, we, what could pass and what could ultimately make it through the process and what we supported. So, um, so all we are trying to do is say, be more clear about that. And that's to say, we think this piece of, I am confident this piece of legislation is something the department can support and voice their support on. And it is something that I believe has a balance that can make it all the way through the process. If, if it changes, then the process will continue to work itself out. And we're just one, we're just one part of that and one voice in all of that. And um, we'll continue to be as transparent as possible about what we think will lead to a good rulemaking process and what won't. Um, a part of the, the way this bill is written is there some level of trust and faith that DES is gonna be able to do our job. And believe, uh, believe me, we, we were the ones who uh, proposed to the folks involved that we could do this in 24 months. If we didn't think we could do it, we know this, we know how scrutinized this process will be, how much everyone has put into this. So um, we, we, we are going to do everything to do. We're gonna move process concurrently where we can. We are going to meet the 24 months. So, um, and, and that's the only balance to being able to get folks who come from different perspectives on this. A, a timeline is necessary because an open-ended just won't work for the other side. Um. I, my name is Michael Wright. I'm, I'm from Littleton, New Hampshire. I was born and raised in Littleton, and I've lived in uh, the three corners of the state, I guess, up in the North Country, down in the Seacoast, as well as around Keene. And I can tell you, I love this state, and there's a lot to love about it. And this is the reason why um, it's a real draw for many people that um, visit the state, as well as they want to move here. And one of the primary things is to the beauty of our, our uh, state and the waters that we have. And so I'm very pleased to be able to 
come in front of you and talk about um, how I feel about uh, making sure that we continue to have clean water in front of the state. I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit fascinated by the whole process today, somewhat gobsmacked when I hear that maybe um, it's not a binary, it's, it's a binary decision on uh, SB 61. It's a, either take it or leave it type of proposition. That's not how I thought the legislative uh, sausage was actually created. I thought it was through um, discussion and, and from argument, arguments, if you wanna call it that, but just deliberation about what's best for the actual uh, policies that you may be working upon. Good afternoon, Chairwoman, Aaron, members of the committee and everyone. I'm Sarah Doucette from Whitefield. I have nominated myself to speak for several thousand people who have contacted legislators and the governor over four years, all of them calling for responsible siting of New Hampshire landfill to protect the environment, their families and communities statewide. I commend the work of the House over those years for being responsive and honoring the democratic process that it, binds excuse us together. Me. Ms. said, would you be able to speak a little louder? Yes, I'm just hearing. Sorry, sorry, I, I can ditch this too. Um, so we have made progress together. With Senate Bill 61, this committee has the opportunity in the coming days to craft a truly effective bill that may finally win bipartisan support right to the governor's office in spite of his representative's comments to us today. As written, Senate Bill 61 is only a rough outline of what is needed for a meaningful study. What's missing is the means to assure integrity and accountability. You and your House colleagues can put the essential amendment in place to turn this bill into a worthwhile and definitive piece of legislation for New Hampshire waters and public health. Anything short of that will leave the state with an empty process, an illegitimate outcome, and yet another failed attempt at water protection. Most important, your work can make certain that New Hampshire never again uses the existing and frightening 200-foot setback rule as a buffer between landfills and perennial water bodies. It is appalling that that regulation stands. Given all we know about rampant PFAS contamination, defaulting to the 200-foot buffer as written now in Senate Bill 61, should the study and rule enactment run more than 24 months, is unacceptable. The study must be completed with updated and protective regulation, regulations in effect before any permit is granted for a new landfill facility. And in truth, the whole process will likely require a timeline that cannot be set responsibly in advance at 24 months, or perhaps at any other specific number of months. Your work in amending will also require attention to the search for credible unbiased consultants, attention to the criteria to guide their research, and attention to engineering specifications and engineering's limitations, as well as human and environmental health considerations. Public involvement with DES both assessing and including stakeholder input is another requisite. It's been worrisome to hear in legislative bodies that everyone here is earnestly concerned about clean water, only to have votes cast against exactly the measures that would ensure clean water. If we want clean water, we have to be courageous. Today's the time to be all in for an amended Senate Bill 61 that can do the job we need. I respectfully ask you committee members to act on the convictions that you all expressed earlier in this session. Please be the diligent leaders we need to assure that New Hampshire never again operates with feeble regulations for landfill siting. And please remember that I speak for your constituents and their families. Picture a few of them, just for a moment. They're asking you for clean drinking and recreational waters. And I wanna add one more thing just before I close. As a private citizen, um, watching the creation of Senate Bill 61, I have to say that the experience the public had in the Senate hearing was incredibly dismissive. And for this, the preparation of this bill to be represented as an inclusive and uh, transparent process, from my perspective, as someone who's paying attention earnestly, um, the public really has been quite shut out until today in that process. And, you know, the governor, I feel the governor's not in process with us when I hear his representatives say that his decision is already made. And it's interesting to me that 
that representative may not even be here listening to anything um, beyond his statement that he gave to us today. So uh, I really, I've done a lot of public comment and um, I would like to feel that it is uh, included in decision making and that we really are in the stakeholder circle because it's really hard, you know, to get 500 votes in favor of a piece of legislation and a handful against, and it doesn't seem to make a whit of difference in the end. So uh, you have tremendous integrity for going through this with us today. I'm terrifically grateful. I thank you. And I, you know, I look forward to your wholehearted work on this bill. I, I have a lot of confidence in your commitment and uh, your earnest wish to do something meaningful. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Uh, Representative Murray? Thank you, Madam Chair. This isn't a question per se, but a matter of just clerking. Um, you didn't indicate support or opposition on here, and if that was intentional, that's fine, but I just wanted to make sure that if you... Yeah, I would only support with amendments. Thank you okay. for pointing that out. I appreciate it. Thank you. Representative Potenza. Thank you so much for your testimony. I think that um, so many things of what you said kind of ring true with some of the questions that we had. I would love you to define the word stakeholder um, what you think the word stakeholder means in regards with our commitment to the public? Well, I mean, you could guess. I would say your constituents, there are so many of us. You know, we're talking about one industry here and a relative handful of people who I understand they have a business interest and that's fine. But you, I don't mean just you, the legislature and the governor have heard such overwhelming input from stakeholders for so long. I mean, I don't like it very well that the governor and the industry are primary somehow on some level of stakeholdership that none of us can achieve no matter what we do. I mean, that's just, it's an, if you want to talk about democracy meaning something, that's not what it's about. So I don't know if I've answered your question, but I think everybody counts, not just the big folks, um, not just the people who are maybe entrenched in industry or in government. Oh, we're in a crisis. <laughs> no, you answered it perfectly. Yes, thank you. Thank you.